Hi, I'm Ariata Mujay. I am the press controller for River Island and here are my top 10 tips for making it in fashion PR and marketing. Um, background is a mix of everything. I was born in London, lived in Lagos, lived in New York, grew up in Lagos, New York and London. I'm a London girl. So I like to consider myself a global ghetto girl. I'm a business law graduate. I've actually got two degrees, a degree in business law and a degree in business and marketing. And I started working in fashion after my university. Being an African child back in my day, couldn't tell your parents you're going to study fashion university. You're joking. What do you mean you're studying fashion? It's a fashion course is what my mom said to me. And um, so I actually had to finish my university and then take things into my own hand. I did a lot of work experience. I interned a lot. So there was a lot of working long and loads of hours for free, for no money for a few years. And then eventually I got into my stride. Into I'm a little bit old, so I don't really want to say, but I've worked in the industry for over 10 years, um, 15 years to be precise. And I've worked with a lot of people, celebrities, people that are not celebrities, but they're influential in the fashion industry, scene stars, you name it. My career highlight, um, I was going on the 777 tour with Rihanna last year and I was one of the lucky people to be on that plane, seven cities, seven countries, seven days, seven nights, seven nights of mayhem, it was amazing. I learned so much and I've got a newfound respect for people that do what she does. Perception of um, Nigerian fashion, it depends on who you're asking this question to. For example, in London they have this thing called African Fashion Day, Weekend London, I think that's a joke because considering what I've seen on the continent, what I've seen out there and what people are producing out there compared to what we get to see here. It's a joke, so it depends on who you're asking this question. But for what I've seen on the continent, we're coming. The Nigerians are coming. Watch out, fashion industry. When I first started off, there was no industry. So the industry has just really started to develop. A lot of people are becoming to change, uh, becoming to realise that there's a difference between you being a tailor than for you being a fashion designer. So it's quite encouraging to see that there, there's a lot of growth and, and, and it's changing for the better. I think it's the major difference between the new generation of designers in Nigeria and the past designers uh, in Nigeria is the aesthetic. I think the, and also the use of um, different sorts of fabric. I think for a long time um, a lot of um, Nigerian designers and African designers were stopped to using um, their batik and carat print. First of all, that's not even an African fabric. Uh, I think the new generation of designers, designers like Makio, are literally digging deep, looking backwards and like literally investing in, in getting old African, traditional African fabric and using them to produce collection or like getting using the use of raffia. So the new generation of designers are not afraid, whereas I think uh, the older generation were a little bit scared and they tailored towards a particular kind of customer, i.e. you had to be glamorous before you could wear their clothes. The new generation, the Shemaya Benitez, the Macchios, the Jewel by Lisa, Tiffany Amber, they're just going for it, they're just making clothes for everybody basically, as long as you can afford it and you're fashion conscious. Up and coming PRs would need to intern before you can actually get into the job. A lot of people just, internships don't come easy, so you've got to be in it to win it. Uh, intern and get yourself an idea of like, what exactly is happening in, in the fashion period. So a lot of fashion period are, before they start in the job, do not expect that to be PR. So you need to get a clear understanding of what you're getting into first. A few things that make a fashion brand successful, but the main thing I'd say would, that make any fashion brand or any brand successful is the drive and passion. As long as you've got drive and passion behind and you put that behind anything, I, I believe you'll be successful. Changes I like to see in the Nigerian fashion industry and how it's presented is first of all, I just think that fashion should be accessible to the rich and the poor, not just the rich. It doesn't mean every rich person who carries a pen, a, a, a pen and a paper and a sketching pad can actually design. That's not necessarily true. I like there to be a little bit more support amongst other and the designers. The older designers should be open enough to want to mentor the younger designers without worrying about the younger designers coming to take their shine or coming to steal their ideas or whatever. I just think there needs to be some sort of body. So that's why I, I've literally started this thing called the African Creative Collective now, where I'm trying to gather like-minded Africans, not just Nigerians, but to try and gather them. And they've got a hub. So if we need, uh, if people want to start a fashion label, they can come to us for advice. And and if people need help in the industry, come to us for advice. But also, people should also be pre prepared to pay for that sort of stuff. Good uh, advice in fashion doesn't come cheap. No, no, no freebies, basically. And Nigerian people like things free. If you want good fashion advice, you've got to pay for it. I can't tell you what my mission is because it's secret to me. But what I do believe is that I'm here to nurture and push 
African creative talent. I absolutely adore that. That's my passion. That's what I set out to do. Um, I went, I travelled around Africa, nine countries in four weeks last year, just to see on the ground how it happens in different countries. And one thing that I came back from that trip knowing was that if anything, this industry needs my support. So I'm here to nurture and support young creative talent and tell the older ones you either evolve or you die or you just move for other people to come through. Here are my top 10 tips to make it in fashion PR and marketing. One, it's not what you know, it's whom. Forget the thought that you think you're fashionable or you're on trend. If, I ask, if you're asked to place a piece of coverage and you can't do it because you haven't got the right contacts, you're not working in PR. Two, you've got to be in it to win it. As a PR, you don't have a regular nine to five. You're expected to be at the right places at the right time. You're expected to be out meeting people. So if you're at home, if you think you're, you're going to do a nine to five and go home at five o'clock and expect to be in on all things new in PR, it's not going to happen. Three, following on from two, as I mentioned just now, it's not a regular nine to five. Sometimes you just have to literally, you're almost working two jobs. When you finish your day job, you're out on the scene after work, meeting people. But these contacts you meet after hours are always the contacts you would need to help your day job. Four, fashion PR is not about a red carpet and fashion shows. Somebody's got to do the work. So if you think about it, all the glamour of a fashion show, there's people working behind the scenes to make it happen. You've got to be prepared to work, to be prepared to take your heels off and do some work. It's not about carrying your Gucci bag, carrying your long weave and showing up at places. No, that's not you working. Eventually you get there, but in the beginning you need to tie that hair back and put that bag down and change those shoes to trainers and get some work done. Five, know your social calendar and plan accordingly. For example, every year February 14th is Valentine's Day. You can start planning December PR exercises and activities that you can run in February. December 25th is Christmas Day every year. You can plan activities way in advance to run campaigns for your product or launches, whatever. Know your social calendar. Six, know the product and know what you're, asked, you're being asked to PR. For example, a lot of fashion people use fashion terms. If I said to you, go get me a court shoe, I'd expect you to know what a court shoe is and I'd expect you to bring exactly what I asked you back. The internet's not just for social media. Their websites like style.com, Hold Fashion Africa, L.co.uk, One Nigerian Boy, BellaNiger.com. Educate yourself. Have a look at these websites and know the latest things that happen in fashion. Think outside the box. No one likes a critter. That just speaks for itself. It means if you try something one way, it doesn't work. Try another way. But don't just give up. You can't literally give up. There's no right or wrong answers in PR. Eight, think on your feet. There are no right or wrong answers, like I said in number seven, just make stuff happen. That's your job. Nine, get yourself a notepad. A simple thing as a notepad to take down everything you're being told because it will come back and haunt you. For example, I give verbatim every day to my press team and I ask them at the end of the day if they've done what I asked them to do in the morning. If you don't have a notepad, you won't be able to take the stuff down and probably get passed over for a promotion or something else because somebody else did and somebody else just showed that they're a little bit more, they're articulating a lot more of what, they're taking in a lot more of what's been taught to them. So you need to get a notebook to write down everything and refer to that notebook every day. Oh well, every week, every day, whatever, or throughout your time in PR. Idea generation, just like thinking outside the box, is the job of a PR to come up with ideas and concepts and strategies to help promote the band. If you copy what other people are doing, it's fine, imitation is the best form of flattery. However, you need to put your own spin and your own twist of things. It's nothing, basically in PR you have to take risks as with any business. So don't be afraid to come up with out there ideas. The better you start with an idea that's out there and rein yourself in, rather than you start with an idea that's small and try to make it bigger. Those are my top 10 tips for PR. I hope you guys learned something. Hi, my name is Ariette and you guys are watching Spice TV.